She's been called everything from a superhero to a partisan flamethrower. Now, best-selling author Ann Coulter is out with a new book that promises to stir more controversy in our already polarized political environment. The book is called Never Trust a Liberal Over Three, Especially a Republican. She joins us today here at HuffPost Live, the one, the only, Ann Coulter. How's that? Excellent yeah. intro. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. It's been a while. It's been too long. I know. Talk to me about this book, Never Trust a Liberal Over Three. First of all, talk about the title. Um... Well, it's a takeoff from, from never trust anyone over 30, the old hippie slogan. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought with liberals, three was more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I wanted to indicate that this is a light, fun book. It's not a heavy tome, um, because I'm trying to lure conservatives back into caring about politics. We kind of checked out after November 6th, for no particular reason. <laughs> Talk to me about Republicans, because you go in on some Republicans here as well. John McCain is a target here. Mark Rubio is a target in here. Why, why, is it, why the turn here? Um, well, I've always felt this way about them. You may recall I endorsed uh, Hillary over John McCain in 2008. That's what I think of John McCain. Right, right. <laughs> um, and I, I, it's just particularly painful. It, look, if you're a liberal, if your brain is wired that way, you know, fine. But in the case of people like Rubio and McCain, Lindsey Graham, uh, Huckabee, I think an awful lot of it is is so they will get favorable press in the media and oh please interview me really? well, meet the press and to be turning around and attacking your own just become a democrat you don't think it, you don't think any of it is principled though you don't think someone like a mike huckabee for example or, or better yet uh, a mark rubio just has a principled position on an issue that just diverges from the rest of the party well no i mean the big one that we're upset with him over is amnesty and when he was running for all, he was the big Tea Party warrior, and yeah. he was running against Charlie Crist in Florida. He denounced Charlie Crist. This was in the primary. He denounced Crist, saying he supports a path to legalization. That's a code word for amnesty. He gets to Washington. Um, Bill one, amnesty. <laughs> right, right. But a lot of people say that amnesty is the only way that the Republican Party can survive. You talk about that in the book, too. The argument that the Republican Party can only survive if they actually take a reasonable, somewhat moderate stance on immigration. Do you disagree with the party on that? Okay. Completely, yes. Um, I think we, look, the Republican Party, unlike the Democratic Party, has always been the party of the vast middle class. It has been the party of African Americans, though we're not getting that love reciprocated recently, but that's only, a, that's a somewhat recent thing, I mean, yeah. just in the last few decades. And in the working class, whereas the Democrats have been the party of Hollywood, Wall Street, um, the very rich, and I suppose the very, very poor. Um, and I just think amnesty is, you're trampling on who the Republican Party traditionally stands up for. Who has hurt the most? The working class, African Americans, the middle class. I always tell people, if you're not sure what your position on, on, on amnesty is, ask yourself, do I have a maid, a chauffeur, a nanny, a cook, a gardener, a pool boy? Because if you don't have all those things, amnesty, or actually the even legal immigration that we've been having because it's lo mostly low-skilled workers, it's a net loss for you. You're supporting, you're making up for the low wages being paid by Sheldon Adelson. What do you say to folk who say, though, and I would say this as well, not to be, pretend to be objective, um, <laughs> that, 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 that this country is built on immigrant labor, that immigrants have always been the lifeblood of this country, and to stop it now is somewhat unfair and unreasonable. And many of the people who, who we're talking about, they're already here, they're already in the workforce, not just as chauffeurs and maids, but people who are really keeping the economy alive. And this allows us to police it better, this allows us to give living wages, to not exploit people, that there's an actual functional and healthy reason to do it. Um, I, this is not an argument against all immigration, but up until fairly recently, um, immigrants would come here looking for a better life. If they couldn't make it, they'd go home. About 30% of Italian immigrants went home. As Milton Friedman said, you can't have open borders and a welfare state. You can have a welfare state or you can have open borders, but you combine the two, you're just the welfare ward of the world. Um, now, legal immigrants go on on government assistance at a rate that's much higher than Native Americans and we have our own poor to take care of. Hmm. So but you're against legal immigration and the welfare state? Um, well I think it destroys people but I don't see any prospect of and when I say welfare state I mean obviously you want some help for people I prefer the more local it is the more state run it is the more private it is we're always going to have some of that I just think you know by definition someone who comes here and instantly needs help I mean try calling up another country's embassy um, hello I'd like to immigrate there I have no I have no no skills no money but I hear 
Um, it doesn't get very cold there, and I love Indian food. May I come? <laughs> and, I think it's a little different, though. I mean, we, we, I know we're short and time. And if I so. can't make it in your economy, would it be okay if you guys cut me a check once a month? Right. No, they would say, not so fast, Skippy, you're not coming. Right. <laughs> there are so many reasons why that's wrong. But, I mean, I can, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. because, but, but, Yeah, we'll move on, because we can talk about this for a long time. We always do. Um, there's a comment coming in that reflects a lot of the heat I was taking for even interviewing you today. W.T. Effington, one of our brilliant HuffPost commenters, said, Another nail in F HPL's coffin. Why would HPL give Ann Coulter a platform? You couldn't find a rational conservative just because you can get somebody as a guest. Doesn't mean you should. She does nothing for civil discourse. There are a lot of people who say that you do not play fair, that you're not here for a civil conversation, that what you do is inflame uh, the left, you, you speak to the, the cheap seats on the right, and that you're not, you don't have any serious intent. Here. I think this has been a very civil discussion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not only that, I mean, I'm fighting people like that in my own party. Um, yeah. Some of them, especially, especially Republicans, but some of them, I mean, as I say at the beginning of chapter three, what we're looking for here is facts. We are not liberals. We don't just shout out Halliburton or just shout out Rhino right. to make a point. Give me a fact. And so I'd say to your email or give, a, give me a fact. I think we're having a lovely discussion. But there are times where you say things that tick off every, I'll give you an example. Their, oh, good. their blacks are better <laughs> than our blacks. No, our blacks, our blacks are, are better yeah, than their blacks. Don't right. get that wrong. Right. <laughs> Right. So our blacks are better than their blacks. It's so manifestly true. This is why you've got to become a Republican, Mark. I, I, I just can't do it. <laughs> this soul that's inside of me stops it from happening. But, 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 but tell, me, tell, tell me why a statement like that, first of all, explain what you meant by it, but also why it couldn't be made in a different way. Um, well, it was Twitter. I wanted to make it quickly, and it's just something that's always struck me. I mean, you look at people like... Herman Cain and, and Alan West and Clarence Thomas. What's striking about um, blacks within the Republican Party is they're better than whites in the Republican Party. You do not just roll into being a Republican if right. you grew up African American. Certainly now, I mean, maybe in the 50s you were everybody, all, all African Americans were Republican up until, I don't know, sometime 50s, 60s, 70s, it started to change. But now, if you're going to break from your family, your friends, your community, you've spent a lot of time thinking about it. Well, and, and which or is the why line is shorter, right? Or, or, there's, a, or there's a reason why. Because if, if, if I were black and conservative, I'd have my own show on Fox News, probably, right? I think you should have had your own show on Fox News. I agree with your politics. I agree. <laughs> yeah, tell it to Roger Ailes. But, 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 but the point, I guess my point is that there are lots of reasons why black people join conservatives. Sometimes it's strategic. Sometimes it's opportunism, right? Maybe. You, get, I, you, you and I have argued about this. You are so, you know, dumped on with calumnies. Is it really worth it? Look at what Clarence Thomas went through. Look at what Michael Steele went through. And by the way, when you're running for office as an African-American, um, <laughs> Republicans always think, oh, great, we'll peel off some of the African-American Democrats. No, you don't. We never get them. We right. never, never. It's rare. And I would point out to you, Republicans elected to Congress um, or, or the Senate um, who are African Americans? They are they are elected from majority white areas. Not too many black Democrats. Why won't Mia Lowy give up her seat? Why won't Why won't white liberals vote for a black representative? Look at all the blacks in Congress. No, we have to give you a district that's seventy percent black. Maybe they're voting on principle again. Maybe it's not just about race. No, I'm complaining about white liberals who claim. Oh, oh, yeah, oh I see what you're saying. Because yeah. you, so you, you think white liberals are somewhat racist as well. Yes. <laughs> why won't they vote for a black representative? We do. Maybe because they don't conform with their politics. Well, I, I don't think the Black Caucus is considered particularly blue dog Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> we have a comment coming in from the HuffPost Live community. Lady Bug One says, who does she think could beat Hillary Clinton and why? Um, How about your boy Chris Christie, who you now, he's I, dead to you now, he's right? He's dead to me now. He's dead to me now because he came out for amnesty. Um, but he pushed his temporary Senate appointee to vote for amnesty. I think if Republicans run... And it's not just Hillary. I think once the Obama magic is gone, you yeah. look at the B team of the Democrats, Hillary, Biden, Andrew Cuomo, come on. Um, anybody fainting at Hillary's <laughs> rally is going to be a chubby girl from now. Um, I, I think if we run someone slightly better than Todd Aiken, <laughs> we win in 2016. So you think Hillary's that vulnerable, that beatable? I think pretty much any Democrat is. And you know what I think about Hillary? You know how we've been told here in New York for the past two years it's going to be Christine Quinn, Christine Quinn, Christine Quinn. Oh, the people vote Bill de Blasio. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. I think that could happen with Hillary because the argument I see on MSNBC for Hillary, 
It's the damnedest thing. They seem to think all Americans should feel guilty for stealing Hillary's rightful title as the presidential nominee. Oh, I'm sorry, we ran off with our, Romney. That was with our trophy Mitt. wife. We <laughs> ran off with Obama. <laughs> but that was the argument from Mitt Romney, though, right? It was just, it's just his time. Um, Republicans tend to do that, but I supported Romney in 2008. And by the way, I think we will win in 2016 with a Republican candidate who is not as good as Mitt Romney. And who do you endorse for 2016 right now? No one. All I care about is he has to be a Republican. And against or rather, amnesty. Sorry, he has to be a senator or a governor. And then I say throw them into a debate. And yes, he has to be against amnesty. So that, that's like a, that's your non-negotiable. Yeah, because that, I mean that's the entire country. You're changing who the what the country is. It's not like a single issue. I know I'm not to agree with politicians on every issue. But the for one thing, speaking as a Republican, the entire country becomes California. Republicans never win another national election. Don't want to incite your viewers too much. <laughs> and, but moreover, it's just, it's un it's uncompassionate. I have compassion for the working class in America now, the Hispanics in America now, the blacks in America now. We can't be taking in, you know, if, if, if uh, immigrants but competed with senators, journalists, Wall Street Journal reporters. Right, and authors. <laughs> I don't think we'd be hearing so much about compassion for the rest of the world. I guess, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Let me, let me ask you something else, because this is, this is something that people say. All the time. Uh, can we bring up the uh, the Slate quote, or the uh, not Slate? It was uh, a piece recently written on uh, Salon. Uh, it's about you. This is the part where you guys bring it oh, up. Oh, I missed it. Yes, liberals know Ann Coulter as a vicious pundit for, with a propensity for saying the most hateful thing possible without being yanked off air. Republicans know her as a fearless advocate for conservative values who eschews political correctness in her quest for truth. They're both dead wrong. Ann Coulter is a particularly unique brand of polemic performance artist. Some would say satirist. Imagine Steve, Stephen Colbert with a profound mean streak who doesn't let anyone in on the fact that it's a charade. Coulter has managed to do this by playing it relatively straight as a bona fide conservative commentator who bolsters the image with numerous best-selling books. I guess at the core what I'm asking is, do you believe what you say? Are there times where you're like, you know, I'm gonna say this, I know it's gonna piss off the left, and I know the crazy tin foil hat wearing wingnuts on the right will think I'm serious and they'll love it. Um, except for the very last part of that, ginning up the, as what you call crazy wingnuts. Some of them are crazy. Really Would you agree birthers are crazy? Yeah, most of those are on the left. As I described in Demond. Uh. But both of, both of those things are true. Often I will send out a tweet and I know it's gonna drive them crazy. But that doesn't mean I don't believe it. And I, liberals have been saying this about me from the beginning. I don't know why they seem to consider it comforting to tell themselves she doesn't really believe what she's saying. That would be one hell of an act. Some, some, <laughs> some people find it unethical though. And here's why, and I'll give you an example. Do, before we go, do you have the, the tweet, the gay tweet? This is the one where you came out. Do we have it? Okay, it was national coming, national. Oh yeah. Uh, essentially the tweet was like, it's national coming out day. Uh, and then like you, you follow up with a tweet saying next week will be National Disown Your Sunday or something right. like that. And of course, <laughs> now I, th I actually thought that you were being ironic. I know you well enough to know that you're not, you don't have any issues with the LGBT community. Um, my concern is that there are a whole bunch of people who hate gay people who probably follow you, who probably buy your books, who watch Fox News, who do that stuff, who read that tweet and like you more, buy more books and continue to believe in homophobia. And so in a sense, you're profiting off of homophobia, even though you don't believe I it. I don't think anybody would see that as anything other than a joke. And you know, I, I, and I hate analyzing jokes. You know how yeah. horrible it is. But it's not funny unless it's a horrible thing. It would be like, today is National Iran Day. And I tweet, and tomorrow is National Clitorectomy Day. <laughs> you know, right. it's not funny unless it's a bad thing. So to be angry as if I'm celebrating the bad thing, yeah. I don't, maybe, I don't think, think liberals you, or conservatives thought that was anything other than a joke. a lot of people in America are stupid. <laughs> that's, I think that's my point. You know, a lot of people are stupid. There's the I'm tweet right sorry, there, but yeah. that is not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a laugh out of Mark Lamont Hill, and if I do that, my life is complete. You, you get a laugh out of me all the time, actually. I know you have to run. Can we, there's one question that our gossip people want to ask you. It's not too deep. I probably Could, won't answer it, but go right that's ahead. Fine. Can you bring that picture up? This is one of my favorites. Can we bring the picture? I up? hope it's me with you. No. Let's start gossip. Oh, that'd be a good one. <laughs> the, the Jimmy Walker one, which spoils the surprise. <laughs> 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 the rumor was that you dated Jimmy J.J. Walker. Yeah, he's the one spreading that rumor. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're great friends. We do a lot of stuff together. I'm, we, we are dates, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We're probably at the TV, TV Land Awards dinner, which are so fun. And he is so hilarious, so I see him a lot when I'm in L.A., but we are not 
technically dating. If you see me um, written up with someone, the one thing you know is she's not dating him. Right. <laughs> and he probably won't be liberal. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Except to you, but I'm, I'm winning you over. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> I know you have to run, but thank you so much for spending some time with us. You have to come back a lot now. I'm going to. Okay, we're going this to This is such a hip studio. I love it here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's totally better than all the major networks. We yeah. Cool and you can actually talk and get your, your questions answered and vice versa, right? You don't get cut off. You get a whole bunch thank of Thank you very much. And we get to respond to people emailing in. We're going to take a longer version of them next time. Exactly. So next time, Ann Coulter has promised to come back for a full half hour and explain why liberals are awful. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us at HuffPost Live. So much more coming up. <laughs>